Sigurni. Kaj nekje jaz tani, Angec? Oskana, kaj nekaj nekaj kaj kaj vani slad. Hat normal ni me gita lod, on jata aga ni me gohan jod. Kaj nekaj 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 Kale, moga tsununi, jika hizis, or higis. Kale, gala stitch. Tone na. Nguah loli, jih nyuchi, oh de la system. Oh de la. Oh, root word system. Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Kahnigi Ost, um, Turtle Clan from Oneida. I live here in a community. Um, I've been learning now for 20 years, for so officially half my life. Um, and we were asked to come today to talk about the root word method of language learning for Oneida language. Um, yeah, so these are my colleagues and I guess we'll all introduce ourselves to start. ยาวอ่าชินาเฮอ่าก็เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยว
un caoc y el he ahí donde están hay un daddy un guajuene si a cale coagli yung yat regen has yung yat regen has Soknu kaya ni oslage jitna jitna he ayong gya dagen gahlung ka ang goy goy ne nen mat program so yeah so my name is Yahawi Bear Clan my parents are Gary and Suzanne I live here on the reserve with my family partner and our our kids. That's what I was trying to say, yeti, yaki, <laughs> our kids. Um, and I've been learning for almost 10 years and teaching a little bit. And um, I've had uh, Margaret, um, Been we've been working together for about four years. She's been teaching me how to to speak the language. Um, so I think now, before we kind of get into <coughs> our discussion or presentation, um, what we'd like to do is because is just go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves and maybe just say a little bit about their relationship to the language. So do we have to pass the microphone around for that? Um, we can, yeah. yeah, let me just get on the audio. Um, <laughs> just so that we know how to kind of hear our yeah, presentation. Hear our Sorry. Ah. Not yourself. Ah, me. Ah, uh, uh, James Quinney gets. Um, the nigga there, Tan Hong, to argue with the Tan Oslo Nigga, I don't know the Nocti. Kerdog and Husky Guy, and now Lone de Gan Houndu, Ahu Lunka, Naked Ganton, Ni Wake Wate, Kunqui de Chi, ah, I don't go in a talk on the Gat again, not that, not the door, don't you? Naked me, Tani or Chi. I'm going to try it. The big test. Well, okay, I'll just go. Um, Chesney ni you get. Um, so, I guess, well, we just took the, um, my sister and I took the beginner course with Rebecca over there. And um, <laughs> we're beginner learners, but uh, yeah, so it's just like a real immersive experience. Sekolah saya pergi pada hari ni yang kedua. Oh, hari itu kan kita sudah semua orang nak jadi apa pun orang. Oh, kau ni yang kata hari ni lewat kata ya dah nak melihat apa yang kita nak hasil ni. Tuh nampak kata ya dia so. ตึกนู้นตึกเล็กอ่ามาคนหาเกะมาคนตายาเตะหาแค่ดวงสังขารกว่านักหนูดวงจิตเนี่ยกว่านักหนูดวงตัวนวัดขี้ดวงนี้จ
Translation, she travels the road. I know no skit yet got to her, I guess. <laughs> and I'm always on the road. Oh, no skit and like any call a day. Your yonder she near Chinooks and I wish it to get got to near to her, I guess. My dad used to always say, I have my I have been named appropriately because that's what I do. I've traveled a lot <coughs> for my work here, Nakon. No. You think it's a no, Sunny was sunk a ya, 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 that ni it. Jadak new slugger, chubag yot dust up. A question to dust a walk. Oh, go walk your walk, go no new walk yot dust up, got every yot, got every yon day day. How neat near a car don't call it, a gonna know the naked no a lot of near cheese ago. A gill, a gill of your trees ago to get again has cheese. Unquenni <laughs> Yet Sanonyat Casua got cut or got home, they were home daddy. Can it hurt the arms that collect yet squalid no net on yet? No need net on your lay a coyant down what on what illy honey. Yes, got it yet Sanonyat to your chew or got cut. I have been uh, here working for the language center for about 36, 37 years. And I'm just saying, I'm so glad and 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 uh, proud that these young people have learned enough that they can pass the language on. And Rebecca, I haven't been working with her too long, but what she does, she's she's learned a lot. And and that's and I think you know that's what I always ask the Creator to give me a few more years. Because these these young people they they need us yet, they need the speakers yet, and someday maybe they're they're going to be the ones that's going to carry on this language, and that's why I always encourage I always encourage them, and I, I'm always saying I'm so proud of them, because they have learned so much and they still have a long ways to go, and. And that's why I'm said, you know, like, there's no end to learning. And for us speakers, <laughs> we cannot retire. We're, and and I, I, myself, I don't intend to as long as I can speak. I know Mary, the one that was, I worked with 26 years here, she was, a, <clears throat> she was the administrator for this language, and she always said, and I always said, you know, oh, I'm going to get too old. I won't be able to come and help. She says, oh, we'll come after you, even if we have to bring a wheelchair. <laughs> I said, well, as, as long as I can speak, I guess I can be of use. So I think that's that's where I'm at right now. And I'm so glad and thankful that I can still be here and encourage these young people to learn all they can so they can pass the language on and years down the road they can say, oh, you know, this we've learned so much we can carry it on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wagatsanuni G. Let's see here. Sorry, I gotta look it up. Oh, 
جو تكون قدي اندت جو تكون ام اولويز براكتسينج اند ليرنينج جو تكون قدي اندت اي ام ذا اكتينج مانجر هير ات ذا لانجويج سنتر اند اي ام ذا جرافيك ديزاينر باي تريد برينتر But I've learned a lot because I've worked alongside uh, Mary in the language since I think our first project was in the year 2000. So 23 years <laughs> been doing projects. And then, so I just really enjoy this work because I help make resources for people to learn. And I always hope to be working in the language to help others speak it. I try to speak it as much as I can. And I should be speaking it more. <laughs> okay, technique. Segundo dia o aguei, lá onde eu estive um dia. Quando tenho um dia que cada dia te cai, eu um dia aguei quando vou ganhar. Cada dia te cai, te o que nem. Segundo dia o aguei. Lon yung lahi nil ni yung get nagyun ni kado yung data tao nda ko yung hagi yung data kado yung data so yung data ko na din yung gori na din yung ako ni yung ano de kaya kaya yung get lahi nga nagyun nil is all enough de tigyo sa kaliya ko yung Nolik wian ni yang get kalau gay gua nak sekolah ni tuan no one dan lah deh so gan nukti dia seni nanti so gan no nuk siwa gan seni ni kit siang wa gua gan gua mungkin gan no ni lah deh semua deh yang detajin dua gan no dah kalau gan seni ni jum so gue ni so dung gode nani akan nuk tu saya ke sekian kalau Wagat sa noon niya, na kay kaya sa kwa hala kaya laji niya ko niya ko kwisong ina na yun desta na kaling wag kwisong kwin ay tilihon ni wag kaliwi tok ni kundi dwaja agang kwin ay dwaja yung deta ako ay kung hain kwan uftigat ng bawa noon ng tagur sa yung kwa ni ko Sigoli kaya sa hawi ni yung gets uh, Rebecca and you get to Slunige. Uh, my name is Rebecca and I work here as a teacher. I also work uh, closely with the speakers and also assisting Darlin with resource production. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see everyone who made it out today. It's nice when we can get together like this and learn and spend valuable time with our elders here. You won't go. So goli swagwig, the one to how we knew yet, no while ni wagi to lord, wagatsunui ga idwas. My name is Don, and I'm happy to be here. Jisego kadiwe yandet. So I'm still learning the language. Segoli Swagweg, Wagila Hawini Gets. My name is Mina, and I've been learning the language for probably about five years, but I took it in Sandy Stone, so <laughs> I know more now. Segoli Swagweg, do is do we need you gucks at no while Nikwat the Lord? Uh, I'm from here, been living here my whole life. I'm currently the supervisor at the daycare and I'm just looking for more resources to implement the immersion program within the daycare and also um, learn personally myself so we can continue to teach the children and many generations before us their cultural and natural way of life. Pardon? Oh, I'm... I've been in Chippewa for 15 years, so I'm more fluent there, and I'm just a beginner learning again. But um, I noticed that in uh, Standing Stone, we could say the opening and we could do the closing, so I noticed a lot of that language is lost 
when we leave. So we're I'm um, working here to get it back now. Gosh, <laughs> why is that so scary? <laughs> Um, okay, so I think what we were asked to do today was to talk about the root word method or system with language learning. And so this is going to be um, generally directed at the ones that are working or teaching in language. So if you guys have questions, because we're at like, um, it's you guys are kind of all out of range, but we have a couple beginners. So I think it'll be nice if we just start out really basic. Um, mm. Do you want to go ahead? No, I was gonna say oh, Gwaglit. Wagoketot. Sakali. How are you? Squahloli and Ate Saliwak. Gwaglit. ここ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> <laughs> so, um, I guess to start, every, has everyone taken an Oneida language course before? You've taken one? Have you taken an Oneida language course? Okay. So have you ever heard of the root word method, like that term? Okay. So with um, Ojibwe language, though, you said you learned for a long time, right? So did they use a color system? In language so learning, the vowel system, like they said, the vowel system, it's um, basically every little syllable of their word, so connect it together, it would just make like a phrase. Yeah. So and was I learn that way. okay. So it might be similar. I've never really studied Ojibwe, but I've seen some Ojibwe classes use color systems. I don't really know for sure if they're related to what ours is. But the reason why we've incorporated a color system with our learning is because um, Oneida is a polysynthetic language. And so what that means is that our words, so like a single word is comprised of a lot of different components. Um, like in relation to English, we would have to say, um, for example, he has a house, nigga. So he has a house. That's a four word sentence in English. And in Oneida, Lonusai. <laughs> I know these things. Yeah, for real. So in, but in Oneida, Lonusai is that he has, am I saying that properly? It, that's how you say he has a house. It's one word. Lonusai. Yeah. Lonusot. Okay, Lono Sot. And see, that's even another, okay, so maybe maybe we can start by showing you that example just at the very beginning. So, oh. Sayanka Oluya ni wasan koda ye hiya dunk. So, what she's, I'll just explain and she's writing it down, maybe. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we're not accustomed to actually um, using this anymore. Just just lonu sode neka lonu sode 
Lonu sod. Lonu sod. Lono sot. Okay. So I need all the same colors so I can write in English. Okay. So what you see here is two different examples of how to say he has a house. Nigat saga gada ga ik ne sahayoyane. Lono sot. Gada de jalun tkayel. Sahayoyane. Because of the nature of the house. Nigga. Okay. So in English, I'm going to write to match the color system in English over top. So, Lonu Sai on the bottom here, he has a house down here. So, like an English way of thinking, you would create a word like this. So, that's a good example for me because I still very much have an English way of thinking, even though, um, like, for how much I've been learning in the language, it's still a lot of work for me to switch over. And so, with the English mindset, you would say it this way, and it's still an Oneida word, and it's not necessarily wrong. But the thing that um, we take into mind that speakers don't even have to think about is the nature of a house. And so with this, it's almost like, um, that it's almost like there's a house just kind of floating around. Like it's there when it's his, but it's not really like somewhere. Okay. So, When you picture a house, it has to stand somewhere, right? Because it's got walls and it's got a ceiling. Tonetna lonusot is the way that a speaker would actually say he has a house. Okay. So I'm just, no, this is just for an example of, okay, it's fine. So we have the possessive here. So L-O, that is for he, so one male, right? We have our noun in the center. And then we have um, our verb at the end. So we don't have adjectives in the Oneida language which an adjective would be like a describing word to describe the characteristics of something. They're all mostly verbs that we use, or active verbs. So that's a little bit of a switch from English to Oneida. Um, but we do have ways to describe characteristics. It's just not the same way as it is in English. And so those kind of describing verbs are always usually found at the end of the word. The noun is going to be found in the center, and then the subject or who we're talking about is going to be at the beginning of the word. And now with a fully, um, like if we look at all of the possible features of a word, it comes way out here, and it can go that way several ways. And so as beginner learners, it's just all that you need to really um, learn how to understand or recognize primarily is this front feature of the word and the noun. And that's a really good place to start with your understanding. Um, because the Onai language is so different from English, it's a lot of really retraining your mind to think in a completely different way. Um, because the way, like when you use Oneida, it's a completely different worldview and perspective on everything. It's a very relational language and it's a very um, metaphorical 
language also. So the way that the words are pieced together, it's more like visual to create pictures or concepts or ideas that you can visually imagine in your mind of what the things are that you're talking about. So. Um, so the way that we usually start with, oh crap. The way that we usually start with teaching this and beginning, um, as Ganikyo said, starting with just the who and the what and the what they're doing. I guess is how it's broken down. So the who with, is the lo, that's like the pronominal prefix is what it's called. We usually start with learning pronouns and Oneida has 15 pronouns. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting shaky because of the microphone. Uh, Oneida has 15 pronouns and the way that we started using them um, is we started using these people so that we can eliminate, um, I guess, English translations. Um, we also do hand gestures if somebody would like to do that as I go through. <laughs> um, but we started using these so that we can um, does everybody know what the 15 pronouns are or what a pronoun is? Um, I know that's um, essentially it's the me, you, him. So like the way you identify, you know what? That's like a common thing right now because of we have so many like different gendered things happening right now in today's society. So a really common thing people will ask each other is, well, what are your pronouns or what are the pronouns that you use? Is that, are you guys familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what does that mean when they ask you what are your pronouns? How do you identify? Right. As what? A person. As a person. Very good. Yeah, so that's what a pronoun is. Mm -hmm. So just so you guys follow us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so just to be able to kind of attach it to concepts that you maybe heard in your... Mm -hmm. Because we're going to do a lot of linguistic terms and that can get overwhelming and confusing. So it's just trying to keep it to a way that you understand it. So that's part of why we started using these pictures so that we didn't have to use so many of these terms. But that way, if we're going through our pronouns and we're reviewing like, unkani'i, unkanize, <clears throat> if you, you know, if you can't remember, we ha hold up a picture or you see the hand gestures. So that just eliminates the English and then the usage of some of the linguistic terms. Um, so these are the picture, the people that we use for those. Um, and then we can, we use them in sentence structure as well and word building. So the word, the root that was just up there, we would have a picture of one of the people to know which pronominal prefix, the who is being talked about and then the root and then the ending. Um, so I'll go through um, how she has these up here. So we have ni'i. Oh, you say? It's not pointing at, it's not pointing at you. It's just easy. You say. And just remembering that we're, oh, I was talking to the first person. I was like, I don't know if I'm yelling, but, um, so, lalha, agalha, kale, alha, uh, and then getting into, so those are all the singular pronouns that we start with. Um, and then we get into the dual. So the 15 pronouns are broken down into five singular, duals, and plurals. Um, so then the duals would be Ni'i, Kaleize, Dednias, Dednias, Just so you guys can see all the way to the bottom of the list. Um, so, ni'i kale alha de yagnias. De yagnias. Go over there. It's a good night. We'll get it together. Um, so, amala bize kale alha desnias. Okay. <laughs> Lalha kale lalha, lalha kale lalha gadu ardatani lalha kale galha dehnias. And we kind of picked um, like sort of size, so we picked like the left for for male and the right for female when we're doing hand signs, just to help, just to keep it sort of consistent. So after a while, people just know when we put our hands up, fingers up there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Galha, Kalia Galha, Tekniaks, Tekniaks, Kalia Plurals, <coughs> so Tony E, Ize, Kalia Lalha, Rugwe, Rugwe, Ni E, Kalia Lalha, Kalia Galha, Yagwagwe, so Yahnize, Yagwagwe. So Ize, Galha, Kalia Galha, Yahni E, Swagwe. Mabwegalalha, Dr. Ni. So, um, Ladigwe. Gundigwe. So the difference with these, um, obviously, so the one Gundigwe is all strictly female, and the way that our language works is that when you're talking about Gundigwe, it's strictly female. So if this room was full of 100 women, as soon as one male walked in, it changes to Ladigwe. So that's where it's the all males are mixed. Um, and this is just what's important to learn when getting into how we're going to describe all these and when you're talking about a mixed group of people. I'm sorry, Keisha, can you check the microphone switch? Is it up? Mm -hmm. It is. Um, can, can, yeah, can, can you switch with her, Mike? I'm just going to... Can I just talk really loud? <laughs> <laughs> so how if you can you switch, yeah. All of them plus one. Oh, that's I. Oh, so the yeah. line oh, was me. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that's what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> me and them were... My English is not the greatest. <laughs> no, you can say they and I for uh, yeah. 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 So the easiest way when you're starting to work with this, because it, it, it does get very complicated, is if you look at just the singulars where it's just one person or thing, and you learn the colors for that. So me is black, you is green, him is blue, her is pink, and then it is the dog, right? And so then once you know those, then it kind of tells you what the combinations of people are when you get into the groupings down here. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to say this again. So when you start working with pronominals, it's really easy to start with the singulars because these are all of the ways in the Oneida language that you refer to people. And is this 15? Is it 15? Okay, so 15 different ways. And so that's one of the things with Oneida that you can do that you can't do in English is like you can exclude people. Like you can say, we're going to the mall. And the way that you say it, it means we're going and, and you're coming with us. Or you can say, we're going to the mall. And that means all of us, but not you. Like you can do that in Oneida and you can't do that in English without saying, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and all of you are going, but not me. So, yeah, so just if this looks a little intimidating, all you got to think about is just the singulars and what colors identify with each pronoun here. And then when you move further down, you'll see what those combinations are. So this is me, this is you, and this is him. This is you, him, and her. Okay, this is you and him, so you and someone else. This is two males, two females, me, him, and her. So this is the one where it's like all of us, but not you, this one here. And this is all of us with you because you're right there. Okay, and then down here, all of... These are all males, these are all females. And so it's like what uh, you can have any, as long as there's one male in a group, then it changes the term of that group. Also, that's why you use blue here, because it could be either or. Sorry. Yes, that's right. So here, someone and I, this could be a female. 
it doesn't matter. It's just me and one other person that is not you. Because if it was me and you, then it would be a different term. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. So when we start out at the very beginning with language learning, this is kind of what we try and get people to have a grasp with because it is so much easier once we move into conjugating words if you understand even if all you know is what these pictures mean so you know that black means me and green means you then that's enough because once we start conjugating words we can slap these pictures beside the word and then you know who the subject is talking about whether you still retain it because once we get into the pronominals, we have red pronominals, we have blue pronominals, we have light blue pronominals, we have purple pronominals, and those are all said differently, depending on what the pronoun is. So this is kind of what we've found is really helpful for beginner learners, is to learn these color symbols of the people so that when we switch between the colors of the pronominal charts, that you still know who we're talking about just by the image. So no one like drowns in the confusion because that, that, that can happen. Okay, so I think with that, we will transition into using um, a pronominal chart and kind of show you with the chart how we move through a paradigm and use all of these pronouns with a noun root. Do you want me to do anything with that? Or are you okay with that? Oh, it's very right. So I have three papers here and they have different um, stems. So I'm going to ask three volunteers. Or I, I really need two. Two volunteers. Want to try one? Okay. Let's take the second one. You want to try? Cool. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so what they have in their hand is a red and blue prefix chart, and there's different columns. So we're going to pick just one column. See one that says C stem, A stem, I stem, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So we can pick the C stem, the first one. Okay. So down that column, now you see the ones where it says Ni'i, Nize, Lauha, Agaunha, Aunha, Ditnias, Diagnias, right? So next to it in the red colors are the pronominal prefixes that fit with that word under C stem at the top. Yeah. Okay? But with Ni'i and Nize, it's just going to be K and S. I don't know why it has, it's missing the, just the letter S. <clears throat> so for the so we'll run through it. So I'll say it and then um okay. So Gnu West Snu West Lanu West Yenu West Ganu West Dninu West Yagninu West Sninu West Ninuwes, Gninuwes, Dwanuwes, Yaguanuwes, Zwanuwes, Ladinuwes, Gundinuwes. Okay, so the two that have, everybody can practice too, but the two that have the papers, I'm just going to give you like a minute or two to just go through it and like on your own to be able to say it because I'm going to get you to like recite it. <laughs> after two minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, gnu -wis. Yeah. snu -wis. Yeah. la nu -wis. Ye nu -wis. Yeah. How is that? T-N-I? Yeah. The knee. The knee. Knee. The knee. Some people kind of... Yeah. Ya gni nu -wis. Sni nu -wis. Mm-hmm. 
Gni, yeah, Gni Nuis. Mm. Dwanuis. Mm hmm. Yagwanuis. Zwanuis. Mm hmm. Ladi, yeah. Gundi. Yoyanle. Okay, try again. Gnu, Gnu. Yeah, Gnu West. Snu West. Yeah. Lanu West. Mm hmm. Yenu West. Ga. Mm hmm. Dni, Dni. Mm hmm. Yeganu West. Mm hmm. Sni. Mm hmm. Gni. Dwa. Huh. Yagwanu West. Hm? Yagwanu West. Uh huh. Swanu Hm. Yeah, Gundi. Gundi Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's also like a good study tool to help you too. It's. Mm hmm. So the C stem here, it just means that the the beginning of the root begins with a consonant. So any root word that begins with a consonant will most likely take this. But there's a star for a reason. It's. But just remember, this is just the letter K and the letter S. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So, unkanate iyonhe do gelato ayun de niyan. Yeah, just um, the stun color or whatever, or you can say it out loud. You, just, you don't have to stand up, but. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. Gnu Gnu Gnuis Sinuis Snuis Lanuis Yinuis Yanuis Kanuis Ganuis Gni Dani Dani Nuis Daninuis, Yaganinuis, Yaganinuis, Sninuis, Ninuis, Kinuis, Gani, Dwanuis, Yagua, Yaguanuis, Swanuis, Latinuis, Gutinuis, Gundinuis. Gnuis. Gnu. Oh, yeah. Gnuis. Snuis. Snu. Snuis. La Nuis La Nuis Ya Nuis Ya Nuis Okay Ga Nuis Ga Nuis D I'm bad Um Dni 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 Ni, yeah, yeah. oh, ni nuis, yeah, ni nuis, yeah. nuis. Okay. Ya yeah, ni, oh no. Ya, kin, kini nuis. You know. <laughs> um, sni nuis. Se nu, oh se nuis. Okay. Ni nuis. Ah. Uh, Gni Nuis Dwa Nuis Yagua Nuis Swa Nuis Swa Nuis Lari Nuis Oh, right Gundi Nuis Mm-hmm. <laughs>
So that's a little technique that I that I kind of use. So if you noticed, um, I don't know, did anybody notice? While they were reading through, um, did anybody notice what I was doing? <laughs> After they would say a word, I would pronounce it. Yeah, and it would just kind of reinforce um, where the marks would go, like where you would where the word would rise. And so that's just like positive reinforcement to not to say, no, no, you didn't say that right, but I would just say it afterwards just to catch on to the pattern of how the word should sound. Um, so yeah, that's a really good uh, study tool um, and you can also do it with the rest of the, with the rest of the stems as well. Uh, okay, I lost my thought now. Um, okay, good. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like along the way in our learning experiences as learners, because we're, we're um, like always learners before we're teachers and we still have a long way to go, but we've, we've had a lot of experiences and just kind of putting together what works the best for us um, and then kind of bringing that together as a collective, as a team, because we've been working together so closely for the last few years. Um, and really been able to kind of hone down, well, what really works and what what can we kind of pass on. And so those those little things that are like in the experience, like what Jan just modeled, like with the pronunciation, like that's a whole, that's, that's, that's also an approach, which is like a whole nother thing to this. And so it's all just <clears throat> from our own experience in the classroom of how we've been able to bring these things out to be able to help and encourage other learners. Um, because language learning can be overwhelming, but really um, it also needs to be fun and it has to be an enjoyable experience. And so one of the things that um, we really like to do is laugh a lot. And so we're always being told to be quiet. <laughs> we get our door shut on us fairly often when we're uh, working together. Um, because our laughing is so loud, but um, like language learning is like a medicine, right? It's like it it awakens a part of you that um, might be dormant if you've never had a connection to your culture and your identity before. And when you hear the words and when you speak the words and like even this morning when you know, we were going around the table and everyone was introducing themselves in, the, you know, and using the language the best that they could. But like hearing the fluent speakers talk, it's like it does something to you. And like even if you don't understand the words that they're saying, it's still like it like it like wakes something up inside you that's like really old and like inherent. And so for me, language learning is like really healing for me. Um, and I don't really think that I could do anything else but learn language. And so um, I guess maybe with that, unless we have other things to say, like. Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention that the reason that we go through the chart like that is in, in such a repetition that we, one of the, this is just one of the drills that we use that yeah, how we just um, showed with the two learners here is the reason that we go through that is that uh, like newest is <clears throat> like a starter verb that we use. Um, and it's just getting them through those sounds, the K, S, La, Ye, Ga, Ni, Yagni, excuse me, Sni, Ni, Gni. It's getting them used to that so that when they get another C stem root, which is why we use the root method, they can take any root and we can ask them any one of these 15 pronouns to give us the word for that. Rather than learning 15 different words on three different roots, you know, that adds up. And it's, you know, hard on anybody to learn. So when we break it up in these and they're just learning these, you know, a few letter combinations and how it matches with these pronouns, it becomes a lot um, more easily digestible for new learners. So that way, um, no people don't get so overwhelmed. For myself, this is what worked um, for the first probably 10 years of my learning was there has to be a system. I can't memorize all these words. And, you know, like I was learning speeches, but I wasn't fully understanding what I was saying. Um, I was learning all these phrases and um, taking beginner courses with sentences, but I wasn't fully understanding how, what, what I was saying. So that if somebody asked me what I said, so like um, an example that we, I commonly use is like, I can say, but if somebody came up and asked me, it would take a long time for me to process what was being asked because yungets and yuzayets are different. And so with this method, um, it's a lot easier to 
to show both sides so that they know what is being asked of them. They, they not only know the answer, but they know when it's being asked. And they know when somebody's asking about them. Because if I came up to you and I said, Nate Luayats, I'm obviously not talking to you. <laughs> I'm not asking your name, I'm asking about somebody else's. So, you know, with other people, if they just heard the Yats part of it, they would just be like, oh, Kisha Nyu gets. Well, that, well, that's not what I asked you. So this is kind of how that um, makes it a little bit easier, more digestible for learners so that they're fully understanding what they're saying and what's being asked of them when it's being asked. Um, so the reason that we go through the charts like this is just to get that repetition of those letter combinations so they can apply it to any word. And then you take the A stem and you can take any A stem and apply it. And you can see how all of those patterns follow and a little bit of changes between each root. Um, so I know it's a little bit much for myself. When I first saw the chart, I was like, oh, that's a big chart. <laughs> you know, but breaking it down by each stem. And then for myself, I don't like the list of it like this. Um, I break it up into columns, singulars, duals, and plurals, because that's easier for me to see patterns. Um, so like if I broke it up into columns, singulars, duals, and plurals, the first row would be anything that involves ni'i. So ni'i, dednias, deyagnias, duagwek, yagwagwek because ni'i is involved. And the second row would be anything where ize and not yahni. So ize, desnias, swagwek. And then the third is anywhere where lalha is involved. So lalha, dehnias, ladigwek. And then the fourth um, row is anywhere where females are involved. So agalha, kale alha, um, kale Dignias and Gundigwek, and we combine the Agalha and Alhas because when you're getting into duals and plurals, the it will follow the feminine form throughout. Um, so that was more digestible for myself and how I learned is in a column rather than in a list like this, but we provide all the resources so that anybody can use what they need and whatever works for them. But that's one of the reasons that we go through the drill that she just went through. Um, one, it gets them talking out loud in front of people, which I obviously still have a problem with. <laughs> but it gets that practice, you know, saying it out loud and like working those muscles. Um, we're also broken records for sound practice. So <laughs> practice your sound practice. Um, just because, you know, they're all muscles that we don't use when speaking English. Um, like the <laughs> three newest. And, um, so that's, yeah, that's just one of the things is getting that repetition with all those sounds so that anytime you hear, you know, a root and, or you hear even that beginning, gnu, you know, if, if it's a KN, that's a C stem. So then you'll know how to change it. Um, but yeah, that's what one of the, I guess, reasonings of why we use that chart and these methods for the root system is getting used to those prefixes and getting a foundation for this belt. Uh, I guess I guess if you're wondering what uh, so at the top there uh, you have the reds we call them reds those are mostly active so it's like doing something mostly and then the blues are are statives so they're like mostly most of the time they're states and that's why we have two different colors why we color color them differently because one is like the action and then in most cases, then there's a, a state that something becomes a state after the action. And so there's a there's a few different trend, uh, ways that people uh, look at that. But that was kind of what was explained to us. Um, and so when we say blues or reds, a lot of times the speakers <laughs> look at us with this, like that, like that look right there. <laughs> look right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because they, they, they don't have to know that, um, but we do, so and it helps us. Um, also, the other thing I guess you could look at is like reds are like something that the person does to affect something, and then the blues are an effect on the person. So, like if you look at gnuis, I like it, 
And then you look at Wagnu uh, Waktani, I'm sick, so something caused me to get sick. So that's a blue Wagnu Waktani. So it's like there's, yeah, like cause and effect is kind of like another way to look at uh, why there's different colors uh, for our pronominals. So, yeah. And then this too, it's also a way of helping you to use the front of the dictionary. Because I know there's the Oneida to English, and a lot of people don't touch it, but now with this, you can. But you're going to see, like, I knew it, I like I like it, I liked it, I will like it, that kind of stuff. You're going to see both of there, but you will see the, the pattern. Because they won't show you the whole paradigm, like mm -hmm. all 15 of these. They might just show you a, a few of these and maybe this one or maybe this one. But it'll, it'll show you, and then you, sh you could be able to, you know, yeah. match those prefixes with that root word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if you see one word, if you see, like, for example, or um, oh, oh, so if you see <laughs> if you see a word like yundungaliyax, uh, it stands out like right away that we know right away that it's an A stem, um, oh. uh, and and it's just because of how we, we we learned how we we trained our minds to to learn. So like if yeah, if you hear yundungaliyax, then you know that's an A stem. Ye ye nuis, you know that's a C stem because ye is associated uh that's just how it connects with the c c stem with the consonant and then so it, and then once you figure that out then you you pretty much if you have them if you have the whole list you know memorized or in your mind then you can you can do you can go down that whole uh list uh pronoun list uh without ever seeing the rest of it like if you're looking at a dictionary or whatever so Oh, yeah. Is it on there? Um, yeah, so the reason that there's a star next to those is um, the C stem covers any root that begins with a consonant, a double consonant, and a glottal stop is considered a C stem. Um, so those little and Ys, Ys have a different, a slightly different pattern. So the reason that those stars are there is because if you're using like um, Chigeksa, it wouldn't be chi Xa, because that's four consonants or three consonants together. Um, so that E will come in to break up those consonant clusters. So it'll be instead of where it goes from Gnues, it'll be Gixa, Chigixa. So that E breaks up those consonants. And then the same thing with um, a glottal stop root, like. Hmm? No, a glottal stop. Gixa is a triple consonant. Goslet. Oh yeah, goslet. So, um, uh, yeah, so you'd have to say, like, if you're saying, like, a, a new car or a, a good car, so, like, goslet, it's a glottal stop root. So it'd be goslet, which is, doesn't have that glottal stop in there. We're not going to get into all of that right now, but when you're adding on a suffix, then that glottal stop will come back in. So it'll be like, um, got slight dio. So that glottal stop will come in. But if you're trying to say that I have it, then you would say like, we'll get slight daya. So that e will come in to I have it. Is that the note they should write on that? Because the chart doesn't. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, and a glottal stop. So this is, okay, so yeah. this is a glottal stop. Car, that's what it was just. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just blanking on all the glottal stop roots for verbs, but you know, that that's why that star is there. And then the with a Y, like Yundale, Jundale, that T S is there. Or that T is there. No, T S. The T S is there for a Y stem root because a Y is con isn't a considered a vowel in Oneida, it's a, a consonant. So that's why that TS is there under the Z. So Gyundale, Gyundale, um, that's kind of where those instances come in of a C stem. All the rest of the stems are pretty straightforward. You just use those Gadungalyaks. <laughs> Gidlu. Yeah. 
So there's an explanation of why that, those a lot of stars are there in that first column. It's just because that E will come in. Um, I've, been, I've heard it referred to as an empathetic E, where it basically comes in to break up consonant clusters and a glottal stop. Uh, were there any other questions about the chart? Okay. Yeah. Well, if that's all, y'all yeah, won't go. <laughs> <laughs>